Okay, hey everybody. In this video we're going to look at something called linear regression. Let's jump into an example to see what it allows us to do and how it relates to neural networks. So our farmer here has a dog and she likes to pat that dog on the head. And she wants to learn more about her dog so she wants to be able to know given how many times she pats him on the head how many times is he going to wag his tail? So she knows to learn more about her dog, the first step is of course to collect some data. Measure her dog. So she has her data table here, and each time she pats her dog on the head, she's going to record the number of times he wags his tail. And the first time she does this, she pats him on the head once, and he wags his tail twice. The next day, she pats him on the head twice, and he wags his tail four times. And the next day, she pats him on the head four times, and he wags his tail five times. Now, what does this data mean? Well, to get a better idea, our farmer thinks visually. We have two variables, and we want to see if they're related. So, this is a perfect example for a scatter plot. So, the way we do that is we think of each observation as a point. We're going to graph the number of pats on the x-axis and the number of wags on the y-axis. We'll plot this first observation here. So we'll start at the origin with our point. We're going to take one step to the right because we had one pat this time. And we'll take two steps up because we had two wags. So that's our observation. Now we'll do the same thing for the remaining two observations. And aha! Astonishing. It looks like there's some relationship going on here. You can see that the more pats per observation, the more wags we see. So here we only patted once and we got a few wags. Here we patted like four times and we got five wags. So it seems like the more pats, the more wags. Well, now how's our farmer going to precisely model this data? It looks like it all follows a line. And when she sees that, she thinks linear regression. Aha! So let's see how she will fit a line to this data and what that will allow her to do. Warning, this is only a toy example. Three data points are likely not enough to tell you if you have a linear relationship between your two variables. They're also not enough to train any sort of good model that would give you accurate predictions. Again, this is only a toy example. Warning over. Okay, so again, we want to relate paths to wags. So our farmer comes up with a function. She calls it wags, and it takes as input the number of paths. She defines the function like this, w times paths plus b. Now, if instead of saying w times paths plus b, I said m times x plus b, that may sound familiar to some of you from high school algebra as the equation of a line. So our farmer picked this equation because her data looked like it fell on a line, and so she thought this could capture everything that she may want to know about her data. Now, from a neural network perspective, this is just a super simple neural network. It has two parameters, so we're familiar with b, but now we have this w parameter. So we have two variables that we have to learn. And by learning these, we're going to make our model work for our data. And again, we have one input now, paths. So let's bring in our farmer's data. And what we want to do is graph our model's predictions and compare it to the farmer's data. So we'll make up our own table. Before we can start plotting and comparing any of our model's predictions, we need some values for w and b. So I'll pick some random values for w and b, so 0.25 for w and 0.68 for b. And now we're going to bring down 1, 2, and 4 from this left-hand column and start our model's predictions off on these values. Now why would we do that? Well, we pick these numbers of paths as input because we know the number of wags that go with each. So if we plug in 1 to our model, we want it to spit out a number close to 2. If we plug in 2, we want it to spit out a number close to 4, and so on. So that's why we pick these numbers 
to start our predictions off of. Now, here we're actually making some predictions. So to do so, we're going to set paths equal to 1. So really we're plugging 1 into our WAGS function. And so paths is equal to 1 up here. So this paths has to be replaced with the number 1. W is equal to 0.25, so we have 1 times 0.25 plus 0.68. So that gets us to 0.93. So our model is predicting 0.93 WAGS for one PAT. Well, let's see what it predicts for two PATs. So we plug in a 2. W and B still remain the same values. So the only thing that's changed is now PATS is equal to 2. And we get a model prediction of 1.18. So again, how I read this is for two PATS, our model is predicting 1.18 WAGS. And again, we plug in a 4 this time. W and B are the same. So we have 4 times W plus B, and that evaluates or simplifies to 1.68. That's what this arrow means. It, it, this formula simplifies to 1.68. So we can graph these points, and that will give us a better idea of how close we're fitting this data. And it doesn't look like we're fitting it very well at all. So we can't change our inputs because that's from the data, but we can change W and B. So those are our two parameters of our model that we're allowed to change. Now W does this when I change it. It's very interesting. And B does this when I change it. Now remember I said our model is the equation of a line. So I can actually bring in a line here and you can see that as I change B I'm changing where this line intercepts with our Y axis, our WAGS axis in this case. So when B is equal to 1 the line is going to sit right at 1 when PATS is equal to 0. Now that makes sense. So if we set PATS equal to 0 over here, we have 0 times whatever W is. So that's 0. So our model is just going to spit out whatever B is. Now as PATS increases, our line is going to slope upwards based on whatever W is. So W is the slope of our line. And you can see as I change W, we can slope our line downwards or upwards. Now I can change these parameters by hand and try to get our model's predictions to be as close as possible to the data. And by doing so, we're going to get more reasonable answers back, more reasonable predictions. So now for one pat, our model is predicting 2.3 WAGs. And that's pretty close to what our data said. And for two pats, we're predicting 3.3 WAGs. That's okay. It's a little low. And for four pats, we're predicting 5.3 WAGs. So it's a little high. But it's pretty close. So with these parameters, we have a model that's pretty good at fitting our real-world data here. Now, changing those parameters by hand is all well and good. But, of course, we have our computer to help us. So in the next video, we're going to come up with a cost function that will help us minimize this vertical difference between our predictions and the data. This will find the exact line that best fits these points. And from there, we're going to learn more about linear regression itself and some of the pitfalls you should be aware of before applying your model's predictions to anything that may have a real-world impact. There are a lot of pitfalls, so make sure you watch that next video uh, to be aware of them. So subscribe so you don't miss that next video. Like this video if it helped you out. Dislike it if it didn't make sense. And let me know in the comments if it didn't make sense, and I'll do my best to try to explain it better. I've been getting really well thought out, well written comments on previous videos, and I'm really taking that feedback to heart. So any comments on this video will directly affect the next video, how it's produced, how the content is, um, so I just want to say thank you for that really awesome feedback. I look forward to your guys' comments. The motivation is really pushing me ahead to make these videos, so I really appreciate it. And I want to say thanks again, 
and I'll see you in the next video.